Another concept to master as you learn SpecFlow is the driver pattern. Now you don't have to understand SpecFlow at this point. We cover that elsewhere. I just want you to understand the structure and the concepts at play with this driver pattern. So in our SpecFlow project, we will have our feature files that contain the BDD, the given when then statements that describe the scenarios we want to test. Those Feature files will call step definitions that are the actual code that drives our automation logic. And in the example I'm going to walk you through, we have a calculator project that contains a class called calculator and a number of methods in there for things like adding, subtracting, and the example we're going to use is a square root method. We want to test that square root method with our feature file that we will define in our specflow project and in our step definition files where the automation logic resides. We will create the code to test the square root method in our calculator project. And as we'll see in the example, the step definition logic becomes more and more complex. And what we want to do in this example is use our driver pattern to extract some of that more complex logic and pull that into a separate driver class that is called from the step definitions. And this will give us a number of things. One of those will be a clearer, easier to understand step definition file and also an easier to maintain project in as much as some of the complex logic then resides and is abstracted in a driver class where that complex logic resides for testing the square root method in our calculator project. So let's relate this schematic diagram to the project we have in Visual Studio. And in our example, we have a calculator project and that is our application under test. And we have our SpecFlow project, which is the project containing the feature files, the step definitions to test the calculator project. In our calculator project, we have one class and that class contains a number of methods. Those methods include the ability to add numbers, to subtract numbers, and to complete a square root. And in our example, what we want to do is test this square root method. What's returned from this method is the inbuilt square root function used to create the square root of a number. So that's our actual test result. And in our spec flow project, we want to define an expected result with some logic in our spec flow step definitions. So if we look at our spec flow calculator project, we have our feature files, which contain the scenarios that we want to test with the given when then statements. We have our step definitions. And in this case, because we're testing the square root method in our calculator application, we have a step definition file specifically for calculating and checking the square root. And currently, as you can see, that step definition contains all of the logic for checking that method in our calculator application. And we have implemented the Babylonian method for computing square roots. So this function in our step definition produces the expected result that we then want to compare against the actual result. So we use the assert that the result from the calculator application matches the value that we calculate within our step definition using this Babylonian method for computing the square roots. So as things stand, all of that logic is residing in our step definition and that presents three issues for us firstly it's not easy to read 
All of that complexity, the logic and the mathematical calculation is being carried out within our step definition. Secondly, it's not easy to maintain. Now, there is no one place to go to if we want to update and maintain that logic for the calculation of the square root. And lastly, it's not easy to reuse. If we want to reuse this method in other step definitions, then we need to duplicate the code in other step definitions. Now, don't worry about all of the maths and the logic behind this. I don't understand it either. In fact, not worrying about the maths behind this is exactly the whole point of the driver pattern. It's about not having to worry about how this works. And what we want to do is take it out, put it somewhere else and just call it when we need it. We don't have to worry about the nuts and the bolts contained within the driver. So what we're going to do is create this driver class, pull out the code from the step definition, place it in that class and then call it when we need it. So let's see how we do that. Now the first step for clarity is to create a drivers folder. So all of our driver logic, all of our classes for drivers will be contained in this folder. Second thing we need to do is create our new calculator driver class. And in here, what we'll do is add our logic for the calculation of the square root or the calculation of the expected result that we then need to compare against the actual result. So what we've done is pulled the logic out of the step definitions. It was contained in our square root step definition and placed that code in our calculator driver. And we've got a method in that class, the calculator driver, specifically for calculating the square root. And in here now, we find that code abstracted and defined in the calculator square root method. So the third thing we need to do then is rather than use that code directly in the step definition, we can call that driver class, we can instantiate the driver class and call that calculator square root method from the driver class. And we save that in an instance variable. And then rather than use the result directly from what we calculated in the step definition, we now place that in a variable and we use that value as our expected result and compare that against the actual result that we get from our calculator application. So if we go back to the issues that we originally found with our structure before we implemented the driver class, what we had was that the step definitions were not easy to read. But now our step definitions contains just two lines, one to calculate the square root from a calc application. And the second line is to, to run the assert where we take that expected result and compare it against the actual result from calling the calculator application. So I think we can agree that that's now easier to read in the step definition. The second point is that it should be easier to maintain. And now all of that code, the complexity is contained within the driver class, which makes that easier to maintain one place to update it, which fulfills our third point, which makes it far easier to maintain. And the third point here is that using the driver pattern makes it easier to reuse. In that way, any of our other step definitions can call this driver, a calc driver, and use any of the methods within that driver. Now, the only thing I haven't touched on here is how we instantiate that driver so that we can use it within our step definitions or our hooks. And to do that, we use a feature of SpecFlow called context injection. And what this consists of is defining an instance variable for, to hold that driver, and then using the constructor injection capability of SpecFlow to instantiate that calculator driver. And we'll come on to this in a separate video where we talk you through the concepts of constructor injection. But for now, just accept that we create that driver as part of the constructor for the step definition class. 
and that driver is contained within an instance variable so that we can use it within the step definition. So just to finish up then, I've shown you a simple driver pattern example for SpecFlow project, which reduces the complexity where we have a feature file, which calls step definitions, and we've abstracted or removed some of the complexity in the step definitions and placed that complexity in a driver class that we can call and reuse as we need it. Now, our example only contains some simple logic, and a driver typically will hold methods and logic, but it may combine different tasks and it may offer some degree of state tracking and management. Now, in the next video, we're going to look at a Selenium driver example where the driver is used to interact with a browser and that driver will have methods and maintain state for managing and driving that browser. So it'll be a real life example set against a web application that takes this concept a step further and shows you how to use the concepts of drivers in your SpecFlow projects.